pick up the story of Jesus Christ near the end, Jesus is in Jerusalem at the Passover, moving toward his death and resurrection. In the temple area, he debates his opponents. We're in chapter 22 of Matthew's gospel at verse 41. Now, while the Pharisees were gathered together, Jesus asked them a question saying, what do you think of the Christ whose son is he? They said to him, the son of David. He said to them, how is it then that David, inspired by the Spirit, calls him Lord, saying, the Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand till I put thy enemies under thy feet. If David thus calls him Lord, how is he his son? And no one was able to answer him a word, nor from that day did anyone dare to ask him any more questions. In this final debate with his, with his opponents, Jesus tells us who he is. Claire Luce Booth said in her latter years, I don't have any warm personal enemies left. They have all died off and I miss them terribly. They helped define me. The enemies of Jesus become principal players at the end of his earthly life and they help define him. As the story draws to a close, Jesus gives more and more insightful answers to questions posed by his opponents. But this last verbal sparring match ends with Jesus on the offensive. He asks them, what do you think of the Messiah? The subject of the Messiah is on everyone's mind at that Passover festival. The hope for the coming Messiah is alive in the hearts of all. The scriptures promise a king who will rule the people of God under God's just authority. Through the Messiah, God's reign will be established on earth. The kingdom of God will come. There are many who see the Messiah to be a revolutionary leader who will lead armed rebellion against the powers that be. And that makes the Romans very nervous. Imagine the entire nation in person converging on the holy city all at one time. The tension is unimaginable. The American election looks like a pool party in comparison. What do you think of the Messiah? Whose son is he? That is to say, from whom will the Messiah be descended? Whose authority will he carry? Whom will he be like? They said to him, the son of David. David is the ideal king. Anyone who rose up and said, I am the Messiah, would have soon faced the question, are you of the lineage of David? But more importantly, the son of David would bring the authority of David and the character of David back onto the scene. In David, God found a man after God's own heart. David loved God with his whole heart and soul and strength. David said in 2 Samuel 23, God has made with me an everlasting covenant ordered in all things and secure, for this is all my salvation and all my desire. The son of David must also love the people, and they must love him. When the people chose David as their king, all the tribes of Israel came to David at Hebron and said, Look, we are your bone and flesh. Between this monarch and this people, there is love. Israel lives in the hope 
that there will once again be such a monarch. To the Pharisees, Jesus poses a question. If the Messiah is the son of David, how is it that David, in writing Psalm 110, calls the Messiah Lord? Jesus presents this picture. David addresses the Messiah and calls him Lord, saying, The Lord, that is God, says to my Lord, that is the Messiah, Sit at my right hand until I put your enemies under your feet. Jesus is saying to his opponents, how can the Messiah be the son of David since David calls him Lord? If David calls the Messiah Lord, then the Messiah, the Christ, must be greater than David. Greater in his origins. Greater in authority. Superior in character. Connecting God and God's people with a purer love. Jesus' words probably went over the Pharisees' heads, but we see clearly what Jesus is saying. Jesus is the Messiah. When he came into Galilee preaching the kingdom of God has come near, he was pointing to himself. Jesus is the personal presence of God among the chosen people. The gospel story is an unfolding of people's reaction to that presence. Some receive him, some receive him not. To those who do receive him, he gives power to become children of God. We know that Jesus Christ is the great leader of the people of God. He is the son of David a king who loves God with his whole heart and soul and mind and who loves the people. But Jesus is more. Jesus is the son of God. His origin is in eternity, in the blessed fellowship of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit in the heavenly places. The son of God has the authority to act and speak for God on earth. Jesus' words are the word of the Lord. Jesus' actions are pure expressions of the love of God for us. us. On the cross, the kingdom of God comes as never before. Jesus has above his head a placard reading, the king of the Jews. He represents the people. This is the king that the faithful will choose just as they chose David, saying, we are your bone and flesh. This people's love for God is fully expressed by their representative on the cross, and the divine love, too, finds full expression there on the cross. In Jesus Christ, God and humanity come together in a new way. The Messiah is the son of David and more. Jesus Christ is Lord. He is God. In his death on the cross and his rising from death, God's great design for the restoration of all things is accomplished. With the pouring out of his spirit, the kingdom of God happens decisively. A new chapter in the history of God's people begins. When through faith we make Jesus our leader, the life of the people of God makes a new start. We enter an everlasting covenant prepared by David and accomplished in the dying and rising of Jesus Christ. Now to God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be honor and glory now and forever. Amen. (laughs) 